Oh, what an adventure! <laughs> Get lost with Google Maps. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to give you a, a fair review. Okay, now we're on the PMX uh, camper trailer. Um, also known as Easy Trail Camper Trailers. It's sold by a lot of camping suppliers. I know PMX is one of them. Okay. Now we've done over 8,000 kilometres in this camper trailer. And over those 8,000 kilometres, um, 2,500 of those would be on tar. The rest has all been dirt. Um, and some of the tracks have been quite difficult and hard for the uh, trailer. And remember, I only have a two-wheel drive Mahindra with a diff lock. And the places it takes me is absolutely incredible. Um, it's all down to tyre pressure. Okay, and, and just taking it steady, getting there in one piece and without shaking yourself or your wife's bones to pieces. Okay, so um, we've probably done 600 k's of corrugated roads, and out of those 600 k's of corrugated dirt roads, probably. 100 k's of that has been really bad crawling in, you know, third gear or even second gear uh, corrugations, you know, where the corrugations are sort of really deep and sharp and hard. And you've got no choice. You've just got to go slow and steady. All right, so we did have the springs fail. And you can see... I mean, they've been just fully compressed, okay? And you can see the wear up in here. Um, it's just, yeah, okay? Just, uh, I'm not really fond of the springs I use, but all the shock absorbers I used, but I've redone all those now, and you'll see those in a short clip right about now. All right, I've... Uh, had to replace the springs and shock absorbers in the trailer because basically the old springs collapsed and they lost their springiness for some reason but they're unbranded um, Chinese springs I replaced them with Australian built uh, Petters springs um, proper off-road suspension springs and shock absorbers okay and now it's underneath is beautiful I do have to get a wheel alignment done after doing the uh, shockies and springs uh, just to make sure it's the wheel alignments all nice now the problem I had on the first trip, which was a seven day trip, was the water pump failed due to bull dust you know, that got in the rear two holes of the water pump. Um, they sent me down the same water pump with the same two holes um, that's sitting in there. They did replace it under warranty, but that's sitting in there. I have not claimed warranty on the springs. Um, simply for the fact that they would have sent me down the same uh, Chinese rubbish springs and I wanted Petters uh, decent quality yeah Petters are, are, are a really nice off-road spring which is you know I mean these are a Chinese kit trailer they import them as a kit assemble them and sell them now as a trailer 
It tows very well. I've had numerous people follow me and they've all said, wow, that trailer um, tows great. You know, it uh, sits in the wheel tracks of the Mahindra and it just stays there, even on dirt roads. It just tows beautiful. Uh, the brakes on it have been working good. Um, overall, my wife and I love this trailer. Now we did move the tent. It came with a tent that was mounted on the on the top here, and we moved. Well, we actually gave that tent away um, because I fell fell out of it. it. It wasn't very good for me due to my well, I fell off a wheat solo many years ago. Um, broke my back, lower back in two places, my neck, uh, cracked my ankles, and I have trouble with ladders. So we put that one there, and you can see videos on how I've done that in my camping series of videos. So let's open it and have a look. Well, first of all, the before I open it, um, you can see the sort of loads I carry in this when I open it, okay? This trailer is ready to go. All I have to do is put meat in the fridge, uh, the freezer, and other food in the fridge, and we're ready to go. Um, but let's have a look. Now, it came with these locks on there, with these little things, okay? And let's face it, um, there are, you put a padlock on that and it only keeps honest people out. All you need to do is put a good decent bar in there, give it a rip and it's un unlocked. You just pull these things straight off. So we did mount a Lockwood lock to the centre of it now, um, which still only keeps honest people out. But at least they need more than a screwdriver to get in it now, and that's a stainless steel um, lock housing, double lock, very good lock. I moved the gas bottle, which was mounted, <coughs> excuse me, right there where I've got that um, stone guard. Um, you can actually see where it was mounted. It was mounted in there on those two brackets uh, to the rear of the trailer. Um, I mounted this stone guard, and yes, they're meant to shake and, and rattle and bounce there. I put the ladder, just a couple of hockey straps for the tent. There, we've still got this big box. Um, this box is where I keep my electrical uh, cables, my ropes. Uh, me spare and me, me other annex parts, water hoses, spare gas bottle, gloves, um, ropes down in there in that bucket. I've got uh, two buckets in there, one for under the sink. And I also, there's a little pump in there for transferring water out of the jerry cans into the main water tank. Um, so I'm not lifting these big. 22 litre water tanks, these ones, these are 22 litre jerry cans. Um, no, they're, they're not, you know, heavy to lift, they're 22 kilos plus the weight of the plastic. But when you've um, got the sort of damage I've got, and I don't want my wife li lifting them, I just drop a, a submersible pump down the bottom, put a hose in there and pump the water in. Or when the water, when I've got my water in the back of the trailer, which you can see in other videos, I just use a longer hose, drop it in, and transfer it all the way to the back. Okay, let's um, unlock it. Oh, another thing um, I had to do: the grounding of this trailer was not very good, uh, but because I mounted a 260 watt solar panel on the top here. And did my own battery setup and everything. Uh, um, we've just rewired it and put the ground in. Now, if you can do all that work yourself, you're saving yourself a fortune. Same as with the Penner's shock absorbers and springs I put in. Okay. Now, 
Uh, if you can do all that, it's not hard to do. If you can do all that work yourself, and then like just take it in for a wheel alignment after you've changed it all over. Um, I think the springs and shockies cost us all up around 700 bucks and we did the work ourselves. It'll probably cost about $65 for the wheel alignment. And then we're back to having a really nice, well-tracking trailer. The height of this trailer from the edge here to the ground is 700. Okay. So um, for you Americans, that's over three feet, half a metre. All right. Uh, there's the offending... That's where the, the water pump is. And as you can see, it's really sealed up now, but it has got a shore flow marine sealed water pump in it now. So even if dust does get into this little box somehow, um, the water pump's still gonna pump water. It's not gonna suck dust in anywhere. Um, okay. Now to get the solar through the roof, of course, I've used a proper heavy duty uh, mounting there and run the wires through so everything's waterproof. Now the problem with having the tent mounted onto this camper trailer is, let me show you. Let me unlock the camper trailer for a minute. I'll just turn this off while I unlock it all. Now let's have a look at the inside. Now when I first got this trailer I thought the kitchen sink was far too big uh, and took up far too much space. I've changed my mind on that. We actually love the kitchen sink. Now, as you can see, up front here, now over on that side I've got two 100 amp hour batteries down in there. That's where all my solar and everything comes in to charge the batteries. Now, um, that's offset by the weight when I fill all these up and everything but when it's empty it is a little bit heavy on that side but I don't tow it anywhere empty um, and it doesn't affect the towing of it in any other way now I put a you also notice there's an aluminium backboard there and there's an aluminium one here that the inverter's mounted to. And you can see that's mounted to the subframe. And that just saves me having to put any uh, extra holes through the skin of the trailer or mounting stuff. So I've just mounted an aluminium plate in here. And that's where I mount stuff through. And also the, these are high tensile bolts and they go through the main steel frame of the trailer and securely mount this Lockwood um, locking thing on. <coughs> so the only thing in the front here is two batteries, uh, the freezer and the angle fridge and the angle freezer which are, have been absolutely great, absolutely fantastic. Um, they're the only fridge um, freezer that I would ever take anywhere um, and I've got that other Australian made one inside and it's great but it uses um, twice as much power than both of these put together okay highly energy efficient especially when you've got the covers on them um, they run well in the trailer. A lot of people said, oh, you've got them too close together, this, that, and the other. Um, they've done a lot of hours since I've had them. And they've been over a lot of rough roads. And they've been absolutely fantastic. Okay. This stove here, this uh, wild country stove, which has got a grill underneath it. It's a two-burner stove with a grill. Fantastic. Wife loves it. Now we did make this uh, top part here, you can see the wires from the batteries coming across to the inverter, out of timber. And the way it sits on the 
frame here of the trailer, okay, and then it's just held into to place by some aluminium um, brackets. And that seems to be working fine. The two angle fissures are on a proper screw in plug over there so they can't come loose. It's not a cigarette lighter plug, it's a two prong plug that screws into place. Uh, that's working great. So at the top here we, ca we got bowls, fry pan, um, one pot, because there's only two of us you know, um, four plates, a couple of cups, three or four cups, I'm, I'm not sure, that's my wife's domain. We have uh, a lot of microfiber clo cloths and tea towel. Now microfiber cloths are good for giving yourself a quick wash. Okay, a little bowl of water, uh, microfiber cloth, gets all the dirt off you. Absolutely brilliant. Great for staying clean in the bush, as well as we take a shower if we want a shower. Okay, I've got a fire blanket and there's a two kilo fire extinguisher in the cab of the Mahindra. All right, let's uh, open the kitchen. It'll just take me a minute. Move the kettle. Okay, so that's the kitchen just opens out the back and my wife just reaches over the top or underneath and those three boxes there hold our um, non-perishable foods. Okay, they're 26 litre boxes and they hold it really well. Okay, so here we are at the kitchen. I've got to back off so you can see it all. Now where that kettle sits is usually where the, the uh, gas kettle sits is usually where the stove sits, okay? Now you can see these little marks here and that's uh, just the plastic containers under there just rubbing on them, uh, which is fine. That's the water hose that plugs in just there, okay? It just pulls out and plug and whoop, I'm moving the camera too fast. It just pulls out and plugs into that fitting there. Now when we, uh, after our first trip, we did find three um, dust leaks in it. You can still see there's a bit of dust left, left over. It was from the three spots where the Electrical came into the trailer and it let the bull dust in. It didn't get too dusty in here. Um, that was on our very first trip where we took the trailer out for a big long drive um, out to Mount Augustus and through the rain, Kennedy Ranges. And um, it was a, a, a long, hard road. We came down the wool wagon track uh, on the way home. Um, and yeah we had a little bit of dust where the electricals came into the trailer so we've fixed that and since then we've had no more dust ingress into the trailer uh, and as you can see this is why a rooftop tent doesn't really work on these because you have to tilt it to put stuff in and out which means when you've got your tent put up and the missus is nice and it's having a nice sleep and I want to get up and make a cup and I need to lift it to get the, the, the milk out of the fridge, well she's going to go sliding out there and land on the ground. So that's why we moved 
the tent across to the uh, car. Now that's not the tent that comes with it, okay? Uh, the tent that comes with it is um, like a king's type style tent. Uh, I found it very comfortable, although it was a bugger to get in and out of and I actually fell off the ladder and did myself some damage. Um, another thing, this one came with a useless pump here to pump water out of the tank as well. Uh, when we filled the tank up, this pump leaked right from the word go. So I just ripped the pump out, uh, redid the plumbing. I put that guard in to protect this pipe. See this pipe just here? Uh, that was unguarded, all the plumbing was exposed here. Um, so I put this guard in uh, to protect the plumbing. All in all, on, on suspension, not including the solar, okay, because I was always intending to put to put solar in the unit and not including these, the benches or the switches because I was always intending to do these. But on unexpected mods that I've had to do, which was change the brand of the water pump, get rid of the disgusting Chinese suspension they had on it. Um, it's probably cost me a about a thousand dollars in making the trailer even better than it was. Okay, another thing I have to replace is this wheel. As you can see, it's fully extended. There's no more up in it. The trailer's sitting there level. Um, so we actually need to have a slightly longer wheel put on it. And that's been the problem right from the start. And when I find one that's slightly longer, I'll put it on there. It's a simple mod again. It's just bolt on and bolt off. Uh, so overall, I'm gonna give the trailer, as far as its off-road capability, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. Okay. It's brilliant. Uh, my wife and I love it the bits. Of course, it's basically my wife's kitchen, so, you know, she's um, got quite an expensive kitchen there. And we put that OCAM wing awning on. Um, that let us down. Well, it didn't really let us down. We had a high wind and it got bent. Um, I've fixed it. I've strengthened it. And on our last trip, we had some really high winds and uh, properly pegged down with proper pegs, not the rubbish that comes with the OCAM wing awning, um, all the rubbish string. Um, this thing rock steady. Um, but again, you know, if you're gonna buy it cheap, then expect to, to mod it. Okay, so uh, off-road capability, I'm giving it uh, a 10 out of 10. Um, it's very capable off-road uh, for the tow hitch um, mainly because the type of tow hitch they've used they've used a push-pull tow hitch here which means I've just had to loosely put a table tray there to stop this from bouncing up and down and bang 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 then you get the bang 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 I'm going to give them a 1 out of 10 for fitting that sort of tow hitch they should have fitted a, a solid swivel one, not, not, not one that was brake, because this has got electric brakes on it. Um, the springs, again, I'm gonna give them about a three out of 10, mainly because of the quality of them. Um, and the fact that they did basically collapse. Um, you can see. And the trailer, as you can see there, there's, there's bugger all weight in this trailer, you know. Um, you fill the fridge and freezer, the fridge and freezer up, that, that doesn't take much. It's a 35 litre fridge and freezer. 35 litre freezer, 35 litre fridge. And of course, when you pack them, that, that's, you know, you, you can't pack them so they're full like you fill them up with water or anything. They're just a lot of air space, not much weight. Um, so there's not a lot of weight in this trailer, 
um, which is really surprised me because you can see how both of these springs wore and that is quite a severe wear okay and if you look on this side okay um, this one here uh, was still okay this is the one that collapsed and you can see inside the marks on there from where it was right banging down and going crooked against a rubber stopper okay and the amount of damage done to this one you know and it, it this one actually was bottomed right out the spring lost its sprung or well, the spring has sprung yeah it didn't sprung at all um, it was just like a coil of soft steel that one this one had a little bit left in it okay so as you see let me get down here you can see anyway I've gone to petters springs and shockies and that sort of problem will be no more okay highly recommend the trailer um, like with anything new these days um, you always have problems um, with this one it was the springs and the water pump uh, which are minor issues really um, oh if you're mechanically minded they're minor issues if if you're a uh, non mechanically minded city person then they can probably be a big problem and overwhelm you and it'll probably cost you thousands of dollars to fix them when all you needed to do was get on your back and slide under there and undo a few bolts and fix it yourself uh, all right that's it that's my review of this um, I'll add in a little bit about the springs in it that I took, did in another video overall now they don't they've stopped making this model which i think it's a, it's a shame because it is a extremely capable off-road vehicle it's sitting on a galvanized uh, a hot dip galvanized chassis um, and yeah i mean if you're in a creek crossing and you actually get the get get water over the top of this and you're in trouble because that's 700 high and I, I wouldn't take it that deep in water unless I absolutely had to. <coughs> um, yeah, there you go, people. I hope you enjoyed that review. It's probably a bit long, but it's an honest review. Now, my wife didn't want to be on camera, but um, her input is in this video. And... All I can say is I hope you enjoy it. Um, like I say, off-road capability, 10 out of 10. Just a few small issues which let the whole trailer down. And uh, it's a shame. It is a shame um, about those small issues. But I think you're going to get them, uh, you know, when you, when you start importing kit trailers from China. Uh, the quality control's not really there, especially when it comes to unbranded springs and shock absorbers. Um, yeah, the, the, the quality's just not there. But the rest of it, um, we love it, of course. And that's the, the electrical system I added here. It's all off at the moment because I've got the main switch off over there. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed that video. She's done well, just over 8,000 k's. And uh, we were going on our way to the last trip down south, which was surprising because it was all tar road when the springs let us down. Um, and I just turned around and came straight, straight home. We didn't even go camping. We just turned around, come home. Um, I got on to uh, Eddie in there at Dapco and uh, he actually came out 
and I crawled under there, measured everything up and we eventually got the right springs and uh, heavy duty shockies to fix the problem. Um, so there are plenty of people out there with knowledge, like Eddie's been in springs and suspensions for over 20 years. You've just got to meet them, talk to them, tell them your problems and uh, if you approach them right, you know, don't go in there because it's not their fault. Don't take your anger out on them. And uh, you'll find you'll, you know, in no time at all, you'll be back on the road. And uh, your trailer and, and everything will be, and, and its the handling capabilities will be a lot better off for it. All right, keep safe, everyone. Um, yeah, enjoy. Well, it's, we're just moving into summer over here. Yesterday was 29.7 degrees here in the shade, <coughs> which I thought was absolutely marvellous. Um, if you go on bush, all right, there's already been quite a number of uh, deaths through heat-related uh, problems. Um, you can still have plenty of water, but if you're exercising out in the midday sun, you can still die of heat stroke, people. So, um, just keep safe in the bush, eh? We don't want any more deaths this year. And it's only the start of summer. Don't want any more at all. Bye for now.